Hi there everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be talking about styes and chalasia and I want to clear up some misinformation on the internet that seems to suggest that these conditions do have a quick fix. For example, how to fix a sty fast. I'm here to tell you that these conditions do require prompt treatment and the conditions can linger, particularly in the context of a chalasia. So please stay tuned to learn more. A sty is an inflamed red tender to touch lump at the lid margin. Now it classically presents acutely meaning there's a short history and it classically does also resolve very quickly. The eyelid is a beautiful piece of anatomy that has several different glands contained within it and when these various different glands get blocked ultimately lid lumps result and certain lumps will have characteristic features that help one to differentiate where the lid lump is actually originating from. Eyelid infections such as styes are commonly caused by bacteria such as Staphylococcus aureus. Now other precipitating factors or predisposing factors that will put patients at risk of developing these lid lumps and particularly if they're recurrent problems include things such as blepharitis, which is lid margin disease, where you end up getting bits of crust building up on one's eyelashes, causing havoc for patients such as ocular surface discomfort and irritation, and also it can lead to conditions such as marginal keratitis, where you get a hypersensitivity reaction and inflammation developing on the cornea due to the bugs that are circulating on the eyelashes and then getting onto the surface of the eye. Now another common lid lump is a chalasia. A chalasia is more of a chronic lid lump that develops on the undersurface or underside of the eyelid. It is typically painless, however, if it acutely becomes infected, it can become tender and cause the patient symptoms. A chalasian is important because not only does it cause ocular surface discomfort and irritation, it can press on the eyeball and it can, in some instances, cause induced astigmatism and this can make the vision of patients blurry. Moreover, if it is sizable, it can also cause a relative lid droop and therefore an obscuration of vision. Again, similar to styes, one of the common reasons for developing a chalasia is chronic lid margin disease. With both styes and a chalasia, a inflammatory response is ensuing within the tissues that causes the lid lump to appear and these symptoms to develop. One of the key issues with either a sty acutely or a chalasia more chronically is if an infection also develops at the same time that starts to spread to surrounding tissues, then this may require slightly different management in terms of antibiotic drops into the eye and or oral antibiotics. So this is why it is important to monitor them carefully. This can be done by the patient themselves or by a suitably trained eye care practitioner. The key thing with either of these lumps is that the patient presents early and receives a diagnosis. Also, it is important not to miss underlying lid margin disease because in order to try and prevent recurrence and in order to treat the presentation as accurately as possible, as well as potentially giving antibiotics, the underlying issue or issues need to be addressed fully to try and prevent issues in the future. In order to reach a full comprehensive diagnosis, both eyes will need to be examined carefully, including the underside of both eyelids. The core component of managing both styes and chalasia is to apply hot compressors early. Now, hot compressors will not only provide some symptomatic relief, but what they also do is that they loosen up these secretions that are trapped within the blocked glands. This then allows one the best opportunity to try and expel the contents of these blocked glands 
when eyelid massage will be used in the step after the hot compresses. Now, in terms of the hot compress, this can be done using just towels or flannels and heating them up with warm water. But the problem with this is the fact that the heat dissipates out of these quite quickly. So therefore, it's difficult to maintain an adequate amount of heat over a sustained period of time. Typically, patients will be asked to apply a warm compress for at least 10 minutes in total and this can be done in five minute intervals at a time. Patients are asked to carry out a warm compress treatment both in the morning and at night and sometimes even a third or fourth time. However, this can be challenging for some patients depending on their daily commitments. But as a minimum, patients are asked to do this twice. In terms of the massage, what is required is, if I take my spectacles off, patients are asked to close their eyelid and for the top lid, they're asked to massage their eyelids down because that's the direction in which the eyelid glands open. And for the bottom lid, they're asked to massage up in a motion that I've just shown. Now, what that will allow, as I explained earlier, is the expulsion of contents within the glands which you've worked so hard to loosen up with the warm compress. Once both of these have been done, if there's underlying lid margin disease, such as blepharitis, then commercial products such as lid wipes can be purchased to remove the contents on the surface of the eye lid margin at the base of the eyelashes, or a cotton bud can be used to do this. Just going back to the warm compress, a product that I've used myself, which I do prefer, is commercially available eye masks or eye mask bags. Now, what they will allow is a convenient way of heating up the bag classically within the microwave, and then you can simply pop it over the surface of both eyes and eyelids, and you just secure the attachment at the back, and this gives a sustained release of heat and it also maintains the heat for longer so i would recommend using these commercially available eyelid bags which are relatively inexpensive occasionally drop antibiotics or even tablet antibiotics may be given to try and hasten the recovery and also some practitioners do offer drop steroids to try and help with the inflammation in other instances, ocular lubricants may be required to try and help with the symptoms of discomfort that patients may be experiencing, particularly if the lid lump is on the underside of the eyelid. Some treatment options such as oral antibiotics, particularly if there is not any associated eyelid infection in the surrounding skin, have variable pieces of evidence that exist. So some practitioners do give them, others don't, and the practice is variable out there with respect to this. Another treatment option that can be tried in certain patients is the injection of a steroid directly into the lid lump in the case of a chalazion. Now, this can have several problems, two of the most common problems being it can cause changes in pigmentation within the skin. Not only that, it can also cause atrophy of fat and also it can lead to emboli developing, which can cause loss of vision. If one has been down the medical route of treating a chalazion and trying to manage it and this has been unsuccessful, then the option of surgical removal should be considered. This classically involves an incision and curatage and to break it down and make it as simple as possible, ultimately local anaesthetic is instilled within the area. The lid is turned inside out and access is gained to the lid lump. A small incision is made within the lid lump centrally and then the contents of the lid lump are essentially scooped out. The way you can think of it is a um, spoon and an egg cup. Once the contents are removed, an antibiotic ointment is classically applied and the area is cleaned and the lid is turned back over and there is no requirement for any sutures. This procedure can be carried out in an outpatient setting or as it is referred to in America in an office setting. 
primary prevention is always better than cure and it's important to educate patients and counsel them about the importance of maintaining regular and good lid hygiene practices. This involves a three-tier approach as discussed and that means heat, massage and then eyelid scrubs as needed. How patients do this moving forward can vary. So some patients do it once or twice a week, other patients can do it more frequently, other patients can do it less frequently. It is important to counsel them about these conditions because they are chronic conditions, meaning once you have treated them once, they are not cured because they can come back. And that's why patients should be aware of them and how to manage them as effectively as possible. I hope you found this video useful about styes and chalasia and how they are treated. Please do give it a thumbs up, subscribe, like, and please do comment. I really do enjoy reading your comments and you sharing information with not only myself, but other subscribers on this particular channel. We can all learn from each other and therefore I look forward to hearing your comments regarding these particular topics. Also, if you do have any suggestions for content, then please do share them. Until next time, take care.